very hot, very beautiful Brasov, Romania. We got all settled in, no big deal last night, and we are ready to go. It's of course late in the day as per usual, and we are heading to get some lunch. We're gonna make a few little sightseeing stops along the way, but first, how cute is this neighborhood that we're staying in? It's like a 15 minute walk from Old Town, just kind of outside of things. They call it the village or something like that, and it is very village-like. Just watching everybody out the window over my coffee this morning. First of all, I don't know if you can hear it, you can hear chickens. Second, you can just watch the people walk by this morning, a sweet old man in suspenders carrying two big things of milk, We're just like walking down the street and then he leaves one outside of a door of somebody, knocks on it, she comes out, grabs her milk, and they're just like hollering back and forth in Romanian. It's just very like community and village-like and it's, it's charming, it's charming. And we've only been here, in, I don't know, 12 hours. Anyway, let's go get some lunch, make a few stops and get this day going, come on. The old town of Brasov dates back to the early 1200s of the 13th century AD, y'all, and this town is incredibly beautiful. The first thing you notice as you drive in is this huge Hollywood-like sign that says Brasov up on the mountaintop that overlooks the old town. It's so colorful and so beautiful. Also, Brasov is one of the most famous and popular towns in all of Transylvania, and the population, I believe, in 2022 is somewhere around 200. 175,000 residents here and y'all I am just so excited to go explore this town. I'm excited for summer in Europe. We've been in Europe and it's been summer but my little weenie butt was having a hard time with some of those chilly temps and I have put my sunscreen on and my sundress on. I'm ready to be hot. We'll see how long that feeling lasts. I mean, we've been walking three minutes and I'm just like, this is delightful. It's so charming. And Romania really has a very specific architecture type. As soon as you're driving around, you're like, that looks Romanian, you know? Whereas sometimes other European, maybe like Western European stuff, they have their own, but maybe between France or Italy, they might look similar, but Romania has its own style for sure. Catherine's Gate, which is one of the oldest medieval gates here in Brasov. I believe this was built in the 1500s by the Saxons, and the Saxons actually ruled Brasov from the 13th century all the way until the 17th century, and Romanians actually were not allowed to own property inside the old town of Brasov during the Saxon rule, and they had to enter the town through this gate. This was literally the only gate that the Romanian people could enter Brasov through, and unfortunately they had to pay a toll and a fee to actually get into the old town, which I find crazy because like we are in Romania, but those were the times of the Saxon rule. And also fun fact, today over 90% of the population here in Brasov is Romanian. So how's that for a bit of a turnaround? up above on the wall, a iron arrow pointing in the direction of an alleyway and it says Strada Sfiore. That is the name of this teeny tiny street that we are currently on. This is 
the third most narrow street in all of Europe and the most narrow in all of Eastern Europe and certainly in Romania as well. It was originally built for firefighters to be able to cut through the buildings to put out fires quickly and efficiently. But today it's a bit of an art installation. In 2018, the city let resident artists, local artists, kind of decorate it how they saw fit. So there's lots of little colors and interesting shapes all around kind of emphasizing the windows. It's also become quite the graffiti spot. Lots of people like to come write their name or their Instagram handle, whatever they feel like, a little doodle, I think. Anyway, it is quite narrow, but bigger than like my elbows. I believe it's 44 inches wide, 80 meters long. It has a great breeze, a nice cross breeze. So if you're really hot like we are, there's shade and there's breeze. That's nice. We are walking into the main square here in Old Town, the Council Square, y'all, and it is beautiful. It's painfully adorable. <laughs> it just has that classic, like, European charm, everybody out enjoying their lunch under so those colorful. big umbrellas, and everything is so colorful and so sunny. And Eastern Europeans love their flowers, I feel like, maybe because it's usually very cold. Anyway, yeah. everything is just very alive. I love uh. it. I love moments that actually feel like a vacation. I know it looks like Jordan and I's life is perpetual vacation, but that's really not the case at all. But just sitting here, we're in the square, about to have a delightful lunch under the shade. It just feels ah, quintessential European summer. We just put in our order, so we'll show you what we got in just a second. Service was so sweet, so nice. And can I tell you, nowhere that I have traveled, and we've been to several countries now, do they assume I'm local more than in Romania? Which leads me to believe that not very many tourists learn how to say like hello and thank you because that's all that Jordan and I know. And every time we say it, they start speaking to us in Romanian, they handed me a Romanian menu, and then they're like, oh, English? And I'm like, yes, please, yes, please. I faked it really good for about two words. <laughs> but anyway, it's, it's kind of nice, kind of flattering. This is, oh, where are we? Oh my gosh, I'm just so excited. I forgot to tell you where we are. We are at a restaurant called Ograda. Normally, you know, don't have your meals right in the city center. We know that, we know that. But this one had excellent reviews and so far so good. Sometimes it's worth it. We'll see if the food's worth it. Our waitress recommended their lemonade and it's an elderflower lemonade. And I had my eye on it anyway, so I was like, yeah, definitely, let's do that. I didn't know it was like a slushy, which is so exciting because it's so hot. I'm, I'm tough about the heat, but it is it is quite hot. It's really like this is vacation. so, yeah, it is like a on vacation. I got slushies, I got sundresses. You want some? Yeah. <laughs> First course has arrived and it is looking beautiful, colorful. We got two starter dishes. We got this eggplant dip salad situation that's got uh, like a real creamy eggplant dip with like local cheese and tomatoes and scallions. It looks amazing, it smells amazing, and it's served with um, Transylvanian potato bread, which is very exciting. I actually really love potato bread. It's not something I get a whole lot. And then we have what was called a vegetarian tart, chock full of like cabbage, tomatoes, maybe peppers, it has a little side salad as well, and some maybe tzatziki or some kind of yogurt dressing. Let's dig in. It's got a nice saltiness from the cheese. The scallions make it so bright. That's delicious. Very nice on a hot day. Okay, I got the vegetarian tart with homemade yogurt. There's some kind of crust on the bottom, like a pastry crust, and it's delicious. The cabbage is really good. It's a warm dish, not cold. And it just has that savory cabbage and onion and cheese flavor to it. And the sauce is really good too. It is like a tzatziki. It has cucumbers in it and it's yogurt. And it's delicious. The brightness of it really bounces out. The savory of the cabbage. It's good. And here is the bulls with the sour cream. But just to be careful because the pot is really hot. Okay. 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 Thank you. The main courses have arrived. We have a bean soup and we have a dish called bulls. B-U-L-Z, with cheese from the town of Bran, which we will be stopping by, I think, tomorrow, right? Anyway, main dishes, and I'm gonna give a little disclaimer that I only give, like, once in a blue moon on this channel. We have ordered a dish with meat in it. Yes, we consider ourselves vegetarians. Sometimes we have meat because it's very hard to travel and not eat it. Mind your business. Okay, let's eat. 
Y'all, the other reason we eat meat sometimes when we travel is we want to try the local cuisine wherever we are, and Romania food happens to be very meat heavy. So we're going to eat a little bit of meat in our cuisine here. Mm hmm. That's good. That's very good. Does it taste like Texas barbecue? Yeah, it, it reminds me of Texas, like, like a pulled pork sandwich or something. I just got like, one little bite of it, and the flavor is just like exploding in my mouth right now. It's so good. And the beans. It is delicious. That's taking me back to my roots a little bit. All right, let's dig into this Buz, B-U-L-Z. It is a baked polenta, and this uh, restaurant had it either filled with cheese or filled with ham. And one meat dish was quite enough. So we got the cheese one, and it is literally like gushing with cheese, and then served with uh, sour cream. It's decadent. It really is. I couldn't do that just as my main meal alone. Dairy times 100 is what it feels like because you top your cheese with sour cream. But you know what? I would, you know what I would do? If you had like a group of four, I would order this on the side. That way you could split it and just have a little bit because it's quite rich, but very tasty. Very tasty. Let's go explore a little bit of uh, Old Town. What do you say? Oh, oh, yes. We are now heading to the Black Church. And this is the largest Gothic cathedral in all of Eastern Europe. And this thing just imposes over the main town square here in Brasov, and it is beautiful. It got its name, the Black Church, because of a fire that happened in the 1600s, and all the smoke from the fire basically covered the walls of the church in black. It is no longer black anymore, so if you're confused about the name, that's how it got its name. very quick visit. It reminds me very much of the Reims Cathedral in France. Gorgeous. Again, it's always my secret weapon to come into the side of church and just cool down, kind of take everything down a bit. Tickets you can purchase in the gift shop, which is like right across the street. Very easy to find. I think they're around three USD. But something that is kind of unique and interesting about this place is they have high school students at the front as tour guides for free. And they do tours, I think, in several different languages, including German, Romanian, English, and maybe one other. And I just think that's a really unique and interesting way to sort of get to know locals, have the students practice like public speaking and their language skills, and also get to learn a little something. So that's neat. On to the rest of our day, I guess. Speaking of black stuff, the clouds above us are looking awfully oh, black. There is oh. a big <laughs> rainstorm coming. <laughs> We're going to duck into the coffee shop right across from the cathedral to get out of this and hopefully wait it out for about an hour. <laughs> we returned away. The coffee shop is closed right now, so. They're letting us use the restroom, which is a good thing. So if you're in the church, you can go there and actually use the restroom. But we're going to go down the street to another coffee shop. <laughs> <laughs> it's just windy right now. We're at a construction site and it's so dusty. There's <laughs> so much dust in our faces. <laughs> better watch out, you turn into Mary Poppins. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> oh, now it's raining. You better come under here. Just got an extreme weather alert to take shelter basically for 45 minutes from 4 30 p.m to 5 15 p.m which we did we were at a coffee shop here we we're at a book coffee shop and like the service over is awesome they have a bunch of cold espresso based drinks hot drinks cocktails wine champagne everything all looks really good um but yeah the store's supposed to bring like heavy rain hail strong winds and we're just gonna take shelter here and wait it out and then hopefully you'll do some more of the stuff that we had in our itinerary today
This place is great. They're very proud of their product. I got a whole beautiful explanation of my drink, which is in a, uh, a cold brew tonic. I'm normally a sweet coffee kind of a girl. I like to put sugar in it. This doesn't need it. It's so nice and refreshing and a really great way to pass time while the storm blows over. We're doing an impromptu honey and different food tasting. They sell all kinds of stuff, peanut butters, honeys that they make here in Romania. And he's like, do you wanna try them? And I said, yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. That was the honey. It's very delicious, mm, very delicious. Y'all, the Romanian hospitality has just been so great. Everybody here is so friendly, so hospitable, so welcoming. Like, this is just an example, it's one small example of the many that we've had here in Romania so far with the free taste test of the products. They gave us this cold brew for free as well just to try it because it was like going on about the flavor of the beans from Ethiopia and how fruity and flavorful and like, uh, it's all wonderful. This is delicious, the food's delicious, coffee's delicious, the atmosphere here and the Romanian hospitality. Thank you. It's very strong. <laughs> we are just getting taste after taste. This is incredible. What a way to pass the time. We've moved on to alcohol. This is Palinga. It's a traditional Romanian um, alcohol liquor. It ranges anywhere from like 30 to 50% alcohol. And he's like, I'll bring you some more water. You need water. And I was like, yeah, no kidding. That is strong. <laughs> like, lit me up. I'm on like a hospitality high, I'm gonna call it. They were so sweet. If Mike ever sees this, I think he must have been the owner because he was just like giving us tastings and telling us all about everything. And then he was like, oh, you're going on a road trip? Have you made your plans already? Let me tell you. And then he was giving us suggestions. Oh my gosh, just absolutely so sweet. We go in for coffee and next thing you know, we're having a food tasting and being sold on all kinds of delicious food goods, which I don't mind at all, cause you know, you gotta eat. And then it's alcohol. And then it's a puppy dog parade. Anyway, highly recommend. I think we're gonna take one little stroll. We kind of missed out on getting to take the cable car today because basically it closed during the rainstorm. We had to wait out the rain for so long. We might try to do that tomorrow, but for now we'll just take a stroll to kind of walk off our coffee, our alcohol and our food. And then that'll be the end of today. But let's go. Come on. Scooties? No, hopscotch. Ooh, fun. I've never met a hopscotch that I didn't hopscotch. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> She cracks me up sometimes, y'all. Y'all, this park is beautiful. Like, all the different types of trees and the flowers and the details. Ah, the parks in Romania. They're incredible. Are you ready? I just always love a good hopscotch, you know? It's fun. <laughs> Good morning again. It's our last full day in beautiful Brasov. And the morning has just been just gorgeous and peaceful. That sunrise. Oh my gosh. We have rooftop access at this Airbnb. And we've been up here every day practically just enjoying the atmosphere. This neighborhood, which is just so close to Old Town, is such a vibe, if you'll allow me to call it that. There's chickens. There's people going about their day up on the hill. There's always somebody working in their garden. It is so idyllic and beautiful and peaceful, even later in the morning. Like right now it's, I don't even know, probably almost 10 o'clock at this point. And it's still just, the only thing you can hear is chickens and birds and maybe a little bit of human activity in the distance. Ah, oh, it's so nice. Anyway, we need to get moving. We have one main activity today and that is Dracula's Castle. 
also known as Brand Castle. I think it's a good hour drive away from Brashov, so we gotta get in the car and get going for one last touristy item here in Brashov. spot a little bit confusing but like there's parking right in front of the castle here and it was five lay per hour so only about one USD per hour we got two hours let's go so to get to the entrance of the castle you got to walk through basically this huge outdoor market and there are vendors selling all sorts of stuff you can get cheese and meats you can get hats you can get souvenirs they are definitely capitalizing on the Dracula thing. As Jordan mentioned, we went through a little bit of a souvenir gauntlet, but that's all right. The food actually did smell very good. Ticket office was not busy at all. Two adults, 45 each, 90 total. I think that's like seven USD each, so not bad at all. Oh, Jordan is telling me it's nine. Nine USD each per ticket, and it's a beautiful property so far. We need to kind of make our way up to the castle and start exploring. Imagine Queen Marie kind of walking around her bedroom and antechamber right there and you can hear the birds and it creates such a nice gust. It's not even like hot in here, but I'm just enjoying the wind. It's nice. It's a beautiful day. This is awesome. The whole first part of the tour kind of in just big open area rooms and I was like, this is honestly kind of simple and just pleasant. It doesn't seem creepy at all like the Dracula stories portray, but this is pretty cool. Oh Getting God. to go inside the tiny little walls and staircase of the castle. That was fun. I felt like you were sneaking somewhere. <laughs> seat in the house. We came through and opened up to these gorgeous views and beautiful fresh air and we thought we'd take a moment to talk to you about Bran Castle, also known as Dracula's Castle, and you may or may not know that Dracula wasn't actually a real person. Bram Stoker, who was an Irish author, wrote the book. Dracula went on to become the most famous horror story in the entire world, but there's a lot of misinformation, confusion, a mix of folklore, a mix of reality, all swirled together to create that story. He, the author actually never visited Romania or this castle at all, but he did a bunch of research in London through different museums and records to create the story. And he described a castle up on a rock in Transylvania. And so a lot of people assumed maybe this is the one that he was talking about. Perhaps there was another one that he was actually talking about. And then the character of Dracula was loosely based on a real person, Vlad the Impaler. Vlad actually never lived here. I believe he lived in a different castle, but he had the nickname of Dracula, which was kind of a mix of two Romanian words for dragon and devil. The name devil was kind of given to people who were either like very cunning or very cruel, and he was known to be exceedingly cruel. Mix that with some Romanian folklore about the living dead and all this kind of stuff, and you get a great story, a you know, great story for the ages, but not reality or anything like that. I tell you what though, this castle has capitalized on it for tourism purposes and they claim it as Dracula's castle, so we'll just go with that. Jordan said, she's the bats? I'm like, those are, those are birds. 
He's giggling. He's trying to be funny. Trying to make a little, little Dracula joke. A very scary movie. water lilies you can smell them from here and they smell absolutely delightful definitely don't miss out on a nice stroll through the park that's right on the property of the castle it's very peaceful very beautiful just a few places to get snacks and drinks and things gorgeous kind of wanted to give final thoughts on brand castle jordan and i both said it was significantly smaller than we thought that it was going to be but it was still very pretty after pelish castle brand castle seems plain but they were built in completely different times i mean literally centuries apart so it's not really fair to compare and the whole dracula stuff neither of us like super are into it so we're just like well yeah you know kind of interesting i personally find the history of its most recent residents way more interesting queen marie and her daughter princess iliana were seemed to be amazing women i mean i'm no like monarchist but they did some really cool stuff in their time queen marie was pivotal in convincing her husband ferdinand to like join in on world war one with the allied forces and all this kind of stuff and then she was pivotal in taking care of injured soldiers and her daughter would go on to do very similar stuff her daughter princess iliana was the first woman in romania to basically have an open sea like captain's license if you will she was a pilot she could drive boats she went on to be a wartime nurse as well like really amazing both of them were great artists and interestingly queen marie after the death of one of her daughters became a orthodox nun i guess out of grief and wanting to do something different with her life she became a nun and then went on to be mother superior of a convent in philadelphia in the usa interesting i found their history fascinating i always love a good you know strong female lead if you will but anyway that will wrap up our time i hope you enjoyed we are on to new destinations tomorrow so we'll say see you in the next one